I think the boys should be allowed to play. Malik Richmond has done everything that's been asked to him. All right, let's go to Ohio now, where tonight a high school football player uh, was convicted of sexually assaulting a 16-year-old girl two years ago is returning to the team. 18-year-old Malik Richmond and another student found guilty of assaulting the girl last year after images of them carrying her while she was completely unconscious surfaced on social media. Police say the girl intoxicated at the time. Richmond has maintained his innocence. He served nine months in a juvenile detention center, and he must also be registered as a sex offender for the next 20 years. State Athletic Association says they had no voice in this. This was the school's decision to let Richmond back on the team. And I'm just going to ask you guys, um, did the punishment fit the crime? We all know the facts surrounding the case, and yes, they were young men and everything else, but fine, 10 months in juvenile detention, but he's back on the football team. Is that the right message? Back on the football team, I, I, I mean, instinctively I want to say it's not, <clears throat> it's not right, but on the other hand, he did his time. He's got a very favorable <clears throat> report from probation. We're not going to hold this kid back for the rest of his life. The bigger question is, was the initial sentence appropriate? Did that fit the crime? Once you get sentenced, you do your probation. You do everything that's asked of you. You're behaving yourself. We're not going to let him back in school. We're not going to let him back on the football team. The bigger question is whether the punishment fit the crime. And Same question to you. Hard uh, to say it, it You know, I just remember on teams, you had every grades up, you had have everything else. Whenever we played on teams, it's a privilege. It's not just a basic right. Uh, just being back on the t field itself, I don't know if 10 months, you guys have been well, in the criminal justice system longer than I have, if that's something that, especially when you have visual proof well, of he it. Was, that but he was 16 at the time. We don't really know what all of the circumstances were, but look, my, my attitude is that where do you draw the line? What do you say that he should be able to do? Should he be able to continue his education in high school but not play football? Well, what if football is his only ticket to college? Should he not be allowed to go to college because of indiscretion and something he did when he was 16? If he did his time and he, and he completed the sentence that was imposed, I have absolutely no problem with him playing football, baseball, basketball, or anything else. You know what, though, Bill? If he was, you think the school would let him, for example, run for student body president? They'd never let him even be eligible on the ballot. You think they'd let him be the lead in the school play? They wouldn't let him I'll, do it. I'll bet you that if he decided he wanted to run for stu student council president or school president, the school would let him do it. He might not win, but he has every right to run for president. Why not? And I don't think they can stop him. I I don't know. He's I, a student. I, He's not well, a remember this. He's yeah, and that's my point. He's a student in the school itself or the athletic de de department for this or whatever, the commission in this particular community, and, and nothing's bigger than football in Steubenville, I guess, but m my point is they didn't have to let him do this. They didn't have to, but you've got the NFL letting Ray Rice back in the league after two games for literally slapping his wife around on a public video in an elevator. You have Michael Vick coming back who by all accounts is now a solid citizen and a team leader in the NFL. These are fully formed adults who committed major crimes. They have a chance to rehabilitate themselves. The Supreme Court has said that juveniles are categorically different because they're immature. Their judgment is by definition impaired and compromised. So he's, regardless of the crime, anything short of the worst of the worst crimes, He's less blameworthy than these oh, adults, right, and he has to register as a sex offender for 20 years. That one to me is years. pretty significant for 20 years. But uh, let me switch gears. We've all seen the video. We know the story. Tony Stewart, NASCAR champ here, he's apologized for hitting and killing 20-year-old Kevin Ward Jr. Uh, with his race car. However, some question whether the apology is enough. And there's a lot of folks, even though the... Uh, the DA from the particular county doesn't say uh, that they see any evidence to warrant it, but many people say that Stewart ought to face criminal charges. Authorities say Ward trying to confront Stewart, as you see at the end of the race Saturday, after crashing his car. Ward, he walked right down on the track and then run over by Stewart authorities. They have questioned Stewart at least twice this week to try and deduce what's happened, and apparently more video has surfaced here. But officials say it was dark outside, visibility a factor, also wearing a black um, outfit. And again, I ask you, some have also factored in some of his prior uh, acts in terms of temper and comportment on the racetrack, uh, that being um, Tony Stewart. Do you think there's a chance here, let alone a good one, that could be any criminal 
um, you know, proceedings. I don't think there's a chance, and I don't think certainly that there's a good chance. And if you take a step back and, and look at the broader thread that's running through all the stories we've discussed tonight, there's a rush to penalize, to fix every wrong with a criminal sanction, with a penalty, to prosecute. There are some wrongs in this world, in this country, that don't have a criminal remedy. This driver who was unfortunately killed, who obviously was contributory in his own death, and there's a degree of assumed risk in this kind of behavior, and there are going to be armies of civil lawyers lining up to sue Stewart if he's culpable in that regard. There are no shortages of sanctions, if they're deserved, that can be imposed on this man. This is not a criminal case. How much I mean, time did he have to formulate? He's driving a yeah. car at over 100 miles an hour. This man crashes, comes around out of nowhere in the dark. Exactly how much time, a millisecond, to formulate a criminal intent here? Well, I, I don't see it. I respectfully disagree with really? my brethren. Okay. Yeah, yeah, first off, look. Um, Last I looked, apology is not a legal defense, okay? So I don't care how many times he apologizes. This is a, this is a case where the answer to your question is fact-specific. To Jim's point, formulating intent. Well, there are certain crimes for which he doesn't have to have an intent. Criminally negligent homicide does not require an intent. Reckless conduct does not require intent. Right, but so, the recklessness has to be akin under our law to intentional murder. And even with criminal negligence, there's a degree of moral culpability. We were talking to, about this in the back that, right. have, that has to be shown. I, I, that, I, and I don't disagree with that. But what I'm saying is, in order to answer the question, you have to know what the facts are. You see the video, but, you know, I, I think it, different people have different perceptions of it. Some accounts were that, that uh, Stewart basically swerved and basically the, t the car fishtailed and hit the other driver. I don't really know what it was, but what I'm saying is if the facts would support a criminal charge, he doesn't get a pass simply because oh, no. it was a race and he doesn't get a pass because he apologized. Does he get a pass though because the guy ran into the middle of a racetrack and everything <laughs> no, that no, happened after no, that? No, look, no? If, if it was unavoidable, yeah. if, if, if the other driver you know, is pointing his finger and steps right in front of the car and the car's going 100 miles an hour, then, you, then he, he's not accountable. But if he could have avoided it. Well, there's mm. the negligence yeah. and recklessness under a criminal theory, there has to be a risk that you disregard. And when you're going over 100 miles an hour, and, and I mean, how ridiculous is it to get out of your car? That's not the time to confront no, them. No, that I think we agree on. We're going to wrap thing, uh, things up right after this. Stay with us.